Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and just for reference, I'm going to copy um, this little uh, text box, the notepad, um, from the previous file, just so we'll have this uh, in the file to look at together. Now, the first step when working with Weaverbird is to bring your mesh primitive in. So, in parameters, we're going to grab from geometry a container for meshes. Go ahead and label this guy. This will be my input mesh primitive. Right click and set one mesh. I always just hide the mesh back in Rhino uh, so that I only see um, the preview from Grasshopper. Here's our mesh primitive, and as we were uh, already speaking about uh, in, the, in the PowerPoint, the mesh primitive is going to go through uh, a series of, of smoothing operations. And in order uh, for that to happen, we need to introduce some Weaverbird components. So from Weaverbird, you'll see that there is a dropdown called sub D. This is subdivision. Let's go ahead and grab the Catmull Clark subdivision and drop it down. Now, if we think about for a moment what subdivision modeling uh, requires, it's going to be a mesh primitive, M, the number of smoothing operations, L or level, and S, how to treat the naked edges. I'm going to drop the output of my mesh primitive into M. I'm going to turn the preview off of my mesh primitive and you can see here in L the level of subdivisions and S how to treat the naked edges. Now if you notice here in Rhino I can see all of the edges of my mesh. If you're having difficulty seeing that or you're not seeing at all Note here in display, Grasshopper has an option to turn that on or off. Now, one thing to note, and I'll turn my preview off of Weaverbird and back on here, is that the display does not affect Weaverbird components. Okay, so that's really important to note. Okay, so this display only works for grasshopper mesh objects. Um, I think that's just a little thing, a little over, uh, uh, some of those overlooked um, by uh, Julio, the uh, person who authored uh, Weaverbird. But this will allow us to see the mesh edges um, for mesh components from grasshopper. And if we turn the preview back on here, we can see now the mesh edges, or subdivision surface uh, edges from the component here, Catmull Clark. So let's take a look over here, Catmull Clark. Now, Catmull Clark subdivision calculates the type of mesh-based recursive subdivision described by Edwin Catmull and Jim Clark at first in their 1978 paper. Not that useful of information, <laughs> but uh, the important thing to note is that it results in a subdivision surface um, which always consists of quad faces. Now. I am using the terminology subdivision surface. If you mouse over O, you'll notice that it is a mesh, the mesh after the subdividing process. So it's a little bit odd, perhaps, but um, just, just remember that we're not talking about nerd surfaces. We're talking about subdivision surfaces. Uh, it's just a mesh which is uh, finely uh, refined. Now, L will give us a number of subdividing, subdividing iterations, so that would require a slider. We'll call this level of smoothing. And we will make this between 1 and 3. Now this is very important because if you think about what's happening whenever you're refining the mesh through smoothing, when you say a level one uh, smoothing operation, it's going to be taking each face and subdividing it 
one time, right? So that means that one face will become uh, four faces. So if we hit OK and take a look at that, we can see here in the original mesh, the original mesh face here, subdivided one time, results in a new mesh face with four faces here. If we kick that to two, we have now eight. We kick this to three, a lot more, right? So if you have that set to one to 10, right, you're gonna crash your computer, so one to three. And in fact, Weaverbird will actually throw an error to you and ask if that's really what you're trying to do. Um, S, how do you want to treat the naked edges? So I'm gonna right click, and you'll see that there is a little option here. You can set naked edge uh, to fixed, smooth, or corner fixed. So I'm gonna say fixed, right? And that's gonna um, set this to fixed. You'll see that now the corners are actually fixed to wherever they were. Smooth. and corner fix. Smooth. Excellent. And actually, um, the component that we were using in the previous file, um, I guess, was this guy. So I'll just switch that back so you can see it here. Excellent. So this is your Weaver Bird, um, Camel Clark. And if you notice, if you go to Weaverbird and you drop down from the subdivision menu, um, constant quads, for instance, we could take our mesh into here. We can turn our preview off. Put the number of subdivisions here. And you can see that results in a very different um, subdivision routine, right? This is going to be a harder edge. Why that is? Uh, because constant quads calculates all quad and same looking mesh, which is derived by adding a face for any edge to the original mesh. So it actually tries to retain uh, as much of the original shape as possible. Whereas when we look at the Catmull Clark, this is actually smoothing a lot more, right? And then lastly, we can look at loop subdivision. The level the mesh and turn the preview off. And you can see that this one is going to triangulate uh, that original surface. And here in, or that original uh, mesh primitive. And here at the corner, you can see that you, know, you, you get some funky uh, stuff going on. So I'm going to stick with my Catmull Clark smoothing. Excellent. Now, 